Hello there, folks. It's the uh, 2nd of January 2016, and I'd like to start off with wishing all my subscribers and viewers a very happy forthcoming growing year. Saying that, it's teeming down the rain at the moment, and my thoughts do go out with those people, other areas, especially up north, where they've had horrendous storms and floods and that, and been washed out of house and home. So, I thought some with you hang in there. We're all with you. You saw in my recent video that was uh, making the lid for the hot box. All well, that it is in position, we'll be getting that ready in a minute. Just want to quick show you of the what the so I had two going. This is the other one I got, and the other the first one is buried in sand. This is on a a mesh grid, and I'll just see if you move the lid out there. You can actually see there that those are the soil heating cables and they give off a gentle heat which is controlled by a rod thermostat which is there and uh, I'm going to be modifying this actually making it the same as that year in the next few weeks so uh, what I was using this for originally was when the seeds had germinated I'd pot them on and then I'd bring them onto this bed and stick them on the mesh grid in their pots and just let the heat rise there is a lot of wasted heat doing it this way and the sand bed is the best so I will say be converting this into a sand bed during the next few weeks and I'll be sharing that with you. Well this is the uh, first hot bed which I'm going to be looking at first and uh, what I've got to do the level of sand just needs topping up probably half an inch or so because although it's a sealed unit this is it's uh, the sand does get lower where it actually clings to the roots as you pull the plants out of the, uh, after they've grown. That yellow thing there is actually the thermostat, the rod thermostat, which monitors the temperature of the bed. So uh, I want that as near to the surface as possible so I can tell what the temperature is where the plants are touching. So what I'll do first is just top that up with normal coarse building sand, concrete in sand, whatever. And then after that, I'll give it a good sprinkling of water with a fine rise watering can. Get the sand moist, not too wet. And then I'll put the heater on for probably a day or so just to warm it up. Then we'll take a few readings, make sure everything's tickety-boo. I've smoothed it over now with the uh, the trowel, so it's not a plasterous finish, but just flat enough is near enough on this case. All I do now is just give it a, a decent soaking of water. Just so that will soak through. That will soak through, and uh, all I do now is put the heat on, put the thermostat on, put the uh, thermometer inside, sorry, put the lid on and leave it for a day or so just to let it bring the uh, mix up to temperature and then we'll go from there. Let's turn it on, I've whacked it up to full power, you can see both lights are on, the actual heat and the mains power supply is there, so I'll just put the lid on now and uh, I've got a thermostat, th thermometer, sorry, and I'll put the lid on, I'll leave it for a day or two, and I'll come back and see how it's doing. Well, it's the uh, 10th of January now, so I think it's about time I started getting the onions in. We've still had a lot of rain, although today is um, no rain at all, the sun's out, but it's still bitterly cold. The temperature last night went down to 0.9 in the greenhouse, just below 1. However, the uh, hotbed is still ticking over around 12 degrees, so I'm happy with that, so I'm going to get the onions underway. The 
this here is the Levington F2 plus S plus hand and uh, what I'll, we'll do now I think I'll just add a, a bit of vermiculite in just to open it up a bit more This uh, Levington F2 is really fine, you know, it's fantastic compost. There's, there's no stones in brick, whatever. It's well, it's the best compost, I think, for seed sowing. It's really good. Not the cheapest, but I think it's the best. Okay, this is just a normal standard quarter seed tray, which I'm going to be sowing the onions in. It's fairly deep that is, which will be good for the roots before we have to start thinning them out. So one there. Up. Level that off a bit. I'll just tamp the very very lightly soil down into the And what I've done there, I've got a fine mist sprayer. I've got some lukewarm water so not to chill the soil. And I'll just give that a quick spin out of the top now. So this is like tepid water, I'm just giving the surface a little damp before I sow the seed. Right, I'm just going to create a, a label now for the seed tray. It's a, this is just normal electrical tape with a, a sharpie marker. The reason I do this rather than plant labels with the seedlings, I learnt from a bitter experience during my first growing season I created plant labels when I was sowing brassicas and for one reason or other the labels lost track with the trays I was in and I was completely all over the place and thought cabbages was cauliflowers, cauliflowers were sprouts and uh, so from since then I use this electrical tape, just stick it on the edge of the seed tray or whatever and uh, that leaves it in no doubt whatsoever so I'll just do the label for it now. Remember to get the year right as well. That's it. Yeah. Right, folks, I'm very excited. It's the first seed sowing of 2016. So, we've all got our own ways of doing things. What I tend to do with sowing small seeds first is uh, I've got a piece of cardboard like that, fold it in the middle. There. Put the seed in there, then I've got a little, like a cocktail stick or whatever it is, and I just push the seed down into the soil as we go and uh, I find that works it, you can distribute it quite evenly and you don't get a flood coming in I have got a couple of seed, proper seed sowers but I find this a lot better so I'll just start off by putting the a few seeds in there and uh, here we go First one, 2016.
So that's it folks, so all done now is just lightly dust the top with a bit of vermiculite. And there we go, that's that done, and I'll just give it a nice spray with some water now. So that's it, one down, another two or three tries to go, rather than bore you with that I'll do them and I'll show you when I've finished. So that's uh, four trays of onion sound there in the heated bed now, I'll just turn the heat on, pop the lid on and we'll leave them to do their own thing. While we're still in the greenhouse I'll just show you these couple of candles knocked up. There's a thing I saw on uh, Brian Bastable had done on the UK here at Gravesite. These candles burn 100 hours plus and it's using uh, vegetable fat. I think it's Trex it is called or what I use there. Yeah. These are just old candle jars my wife uses, Yankee candle. Sends them empty, I save them when I'm actually building up a, starting to make some candles. So they're ready for when I need them. So there they are. And uh, on the test that Brian's done, they've lasted for well over 100 hours. So then we'll do great in the greenness just to keep the frost away. Before we finish this one off, I've done a list of the 2016 Muddy Boots planting. So it's the team sheet of the stuff what's going to go out in this year in the garden, hopefully. I hope you enjoy it. See what you think.
it's starting to fade and the temperature's dropping even quicker. So I've had enough for today. It's starting to ve go very cold now. So call it a day for this one. All the best and see you in the next episode. Bye for now.